Hey everybody, it's Dr. Matthew Herdert here again, founder of thrivingdiabetics.com and the Freedom from Diabetes programs. And I am actually sitting outside a gas station, <laughs> which is why the lighting is so horrible. But um, I was down at the practice doing some paperwork tonight and I was heading home. I stopped to get gas. And um, as I was sitting here, I noticed somebody who was who did not look like they were feeling happy or feeling healthy coming out of the uh, mini mart associated with the grocery store with just an armful of junk food. I mean, I don't know why they didn't have a bag, but even if they'd had a bag, it would have been a difficult bag to carry. There was a big bag of potato chips and, um, you know, a bunch of numbers of sodas and a pint of ice cream that I saw it looked like some other candy bars. Anyway, it was just it was just a lot of stuff. And of course, it did occur to me that maybe some of that food was for others. Maybe it wasn't all for them. But it, I mean, it gave me a lot of compassion. I really felt for this person. First of all, not judgment, not that they're a bad person, but just, you know, I've, I've been in that space. I've been in that space where that's the only way I knew how to take care of myself. And I thought that that was okay. And um, it made me think back to a time earlier in my life when I was in high school, mostly when I was in college. I went to UCLA and lived close to Westwood, which is the little town next to campus. So it was relatively easy for me to just go down and get junk food at night and take it back and, and pig out on it. And um, what I remembered about that time is that the hardest thing for me, once I got into a period where I felt like I wanted to change things, make different choices, the hardest thing for me was I didn't feel like I had any control over the moment of, of choosing, that choice point. It, it literally felt to me um, and I became aware of this through talking to people who I, who's kind of who were counseling me at the time, trying to help me take better care of myself and make different choices. It literally felt to me like I would entertain the idea like, oh, maybe I'll go get a pint of ice cream tonight and eat that. And then the way I felt at the time was next thing I knew I would just like come to and I had eaten the ice cream, almost as if I was in a blackout. And it took me a long time to figure out how to work with that. And I felt really powerless with regards to that choice point for a long time. And one of the things that really turned the corner for me, really helped me change that, which has now been validated by research on habits and um, compulsion, addiction patterns, that sort of thing. It, one of the things that really helped me turn that around was becoming aware of the triggers, the things that would happen in my day, in my life, in my surroundings, inside myself, that made me think, oh, maybe I'll go get a pint of ice cream tonight. And now that wasn't, it didn't change overnight. And it was a long process. But once I started to become aware of the the feelings or the time of year, time of day, the smell, the light, you know, there were different things that would trigger those cravings for me. And once I became aware of them, I could try and stay away from some of them. I mean, there were certainly people in my life who kind of brought that craving on. But uh, if, I, if they weren't things I could stay away from, like a time of day, then I, I was more prepared getting close to that time to deal with that. You know, I was like, oh, okay, it's that time of day and I tend to crave just like, I mean, I was smoking at the time and that's the smoking craving was triggered by the same thing certain times of day or, you know, walking past the, the balcony on my dorm floor that I lived on, seeing the city lights lit up, you know, off the balcony. So if you're really struggling with that, and I know a lot of us do, diabetic and non-diabetic alike, honestly, but if you're struggling with that, start looking for those triggers. You know, start looking for those cues, those things that initiate that craving for you, and see what you can do to either get them out of your life or to stay away from them, <laughs> you know, if it's a person or an emotional situation, or to, um, to help it help you be better prepared. So musings from a gas station parking lot. <laughs> anyway, I'm thinking about you guys. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're, um, hope you're taking good care of yourself. I hope you're not like this person I saw tonight. Man, it just really made me feel, made me really feel for him because I, like I said, I've been there. So that is not the right way to take care of yourself. And there is so much good information, good tools and technology, so much support out there for you to turn this stuff around. So if you're struggling grab a hold of somebody or some system. I don't care if it's mine or somebody else's. It doesn't make a difference to me as long as you're moving in a positive direction because you don't have to be subject to the symptoms 
to the cravings, to the side effects, and certainly not to the long-term horrible complications. So I hope you're out there living large, you know, sucking the juice out of life, really engaged with the things that bring you joy and bring you meaning and give you a sense of purpose. And um, if you're not, know that we're waiting for you. Until next time I see you, don't hang around recording videos in gas station parking lots. I've gotten a number of weird looks tonight. I live in a pretty small town, so this is a pretty weird thing to do. Um, but go out there, live large, be well, and I'll see you next time.